Got another paper three question for you to try. So this one covers ions and ionic formula, reactions of transition elements and inorganic qualitative analysis. Hope you like the video. If you haven't already subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. So for part A, I've just highlighted the key bits of information about these Tutton salts um, in the three bullet points. So we've got to use, um, for this part here, we've got to use one of these. For the metal, we've got to use magnesium or an iron of most of the transition elements. Now, transition elements, remember, start at titanium in period four uh, and run to copper. So you can't have scandium or zinc because they are not transition elements. And there's only two options for this green um, element. So they've used uh, sulfur there, so it has to be chromium. So I've just gone for the first option in each of the first two bullet points, so potassium and magnesium. Moving on to part B, nice and straightforward. So we've just got to do two lots of moles times MR. So we get 3.30 grams for the ammonium sulfate and 6.24 grams for the hydrated. So I hope people didn't forget to include the five waters um, hydrated copper two sulfate. And for the last part of B, so we've got to explain why in step three, the student allows the solvent to evaporate and not boil it off. We've got to be careful we don't drive off the water of crystallization because the Tutton salt has to have this part in its uh, formula. So if you heat it too strongly, the water of crystallization will disappear. So for that, I'm just saying if heated too strongly, the water of crystallization would be driven off. Moving on to part C. So the students dissolve their tut and salt in water. I've just repeated the formula up there. A pale blue solution forms. So that's going to be due to the presence of this copper hexa aqua 2 plus ion. And then the student adds an excess of aqueous ammonia and a deep blue solution forms. So the deep blue solution is due to the presence of this complex of copper here. Just be careful with your brackets. So we need square brackets around the ion and round brackets for the ligands. Do a quick check on the MR and it does actually add up to that 167.5. Moving on to the next part, so the students added aqueous sodium hydroxide to the aqueous Tutton salt, warms a mixture. So what's the precipitate? Well, that's gonna be copper two hydroxide. So you can give either of those formula there. We don't need square brackets for the second one because it's not an ion. And the gas is going to be ammonia because you've got aqueous ammonium ions heated with aqueous hydroxide ions. And then what's the test to confirm the identity of the ammonia? It turns damp red litmus or indicator paper blue. And finally, the test tube reaction to confirm the anion in the Tutton salt. Well, the anion is the sulfate ion. So you would add um, a source of barium ions, basically. So aqueous barium nitrate, aqueous barium chloride, or you could just say aqueous Ba2 plus ions, and you get a white precipitate of barium sulfate formed. I've put an equation in, but they didn't ask for one. I would always put one in just to sort of back up my answer.